Welcome to the International Association of Healing Ministries Presence 2020 online. We were supposed to be in Portugal, actually to the stadium in Porto, but regarding this coronavirus, we had to change our plan. But the good news is today we are not speaking only to the south of Europe, but we are speaking to the whole globe every nation of the world. And we are so glad today to welcome you because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's going to touch you today in a powerful way. It's a great privilege today to have a special guest, but I want to encourage you first to go to register yourself. It's a free registration to healing-ministries.org where you're gonna receive all the free information regarding the speakers, the link regarding the ministry, Ministries, but also you will receive free special healing materials, healing songs that you may know that actually during these four days of this healing conference, many worship team worldwide, they wrote, wrote a special healing songs for this season. And also you will receive other things, uh, like I said, special materials, also a booklet, how to keep you healing and etc. So be sure to go there. As well, we welcome all those who are not speaking English, we have 10 other places where you can go to our YouTube, IHM YouTube, and you will have the translation in Hindi, Chinese, Italian, Portuguese, French, German, etc. So be sure to connect, go to the web, to the web, you will receive all the information or directly to the YouTube. Uh, we started yesterday at 7 a.m. and it was just powerful. God was moving such in a strong way. Uh, actually, we started Wednesday, so we are already on the third day. And we had already 60 healing ministries who shared gold nuggets regarding healing. So powerful. And it's not just one, one stream. It's coming from different denominations. We had Catholic people. We had people as the Protestant Reformed Church, some Pentecostal people who shared just revelation regarding healing and especially about Jesus, this, the healer. And today, it's my great joy to invite a very good friend of mine who have marked already history as he was part of a healing revival. But before we invite him to the stage, I want you to just see this video clip. Tonight, esta noche, in this stadium, in este estadio, lives will be changed. Vidas serán cambiadas. The Holy Spirit, el Espíritu Santo, is going to fill this stadium. Va a llenar este estadio. Lives will be born again. Vidas van a nacer de nuevo. Bodies will be healed. Cuerpos serán sanados. Jesus, we give you all the glory. Jesús, te damos toda la gloria. We lift up your name. Exaltamos a tu nombre. Tonight, esta noche, you will be glorified. Será glorificado. Nathan, this is Oscar. He's not been able to walk with a straight back for no three years. No ha podido caminar con su espalda derecho. God touched him. Yo lo tocó. He can walk straight. Y ahora puede caminar derecho. Show the people how you used to Enseñen walk. Enseñen al pueblo cómo antes caminabas. Now show them what Jesus did last Ahora time. Ahora lo que Jesús hizo en ti. Show Somebody had a stroke down your right side. God is healing that paralysis. Move Dios your body right now. El parálisis. Comienza a mover tu cuerpo. What is happening right now? ¿Y qué te está en este he had a stroke. I wasn't bed for two months and I couldn't move. You could not move your body? No podía mover este lado. No, 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 muerto estaba. It was dead. This side was dead completely. Whoa, camina, whoa. camina. Lift your legs up like this. Levanta tu pie, levanta tu pies. Move your hands. Levanta tus manos. Somebody shout hallelujah. Last year in the stadium, those of you who were there will remember that this man came upon the stage. He was pleading to God because his daughter was in a coma. Él estaba clamando a Dios porque su hija estaba en coma. I came to saw my daughter today. She's in a coma right now. That's why I came right now here. Lord, let the angel of the Lord go to that hospital right now. Tell the people what happened to Dile you. Al pueblo lo que te pasó. And you prayed. Y tú oraste. I received the, the anointing of the Recibí Holy Spirit. Del Santo. And I fell. Y me caí. When 
I went to the back. Cuando fui atrás, not even five minutes. Ni cinco minutos I pasaron. received the, the call. Recibí una llamada. Moved her hand and opened her eyes. Y abrió sus ojos y movió sus manos. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This lady testified last night that God had touched her eye. Now this is her son. Ahora este es su hijo. This child was blind in the in the left eye. Entonces el 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 niño estaba ciego del ojo izquierdo. And the the doctor has verified. Y el doctor ya lo verificó. Tell the child to do what I do. Look 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 look. Oh come on somebody! Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you're going to run to this altar. No se vas a correr a este. You died tonight. Si mueres esta noche, where would you spend eternity? ¿A dónde pasaría la eternidad? Jesus is waiting for you right now. Jesus te está esperando en este momento. Come up to Jesus. Ven a Jesús. Come to Jesus. Ven a Jesús. Come to Jesus. Praise the Lord. What God has done through Nathan Morris in this different stadium is going to touch you where you are. So it's my great joy to welcome right now the evangelist Nathan Morris. Welcome, my friend. Jean-Luc, it's such a privilege to be with you, joining with all those around the world. I've been watching some of the live feeds and it's blessed my life. So it's just an incredible honor to be with you. I believe the Holy Spirit is going to move in a mighty way. I believe so. And you know, Nathan, I have so many questions that I want to ask you, but I feel the presence of God is already here, willing to touch Amen. the people. I feel such a, a faith in the atmosphere, ready for Amen. any kinds of miracles. Everything is possible. That's for Holy Spirit. We welcome you to this face to face. Yes, Glorify Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Bring name. Jesus alive to the viewers that they can experience not the religious Jesus, but the real Jesus, uh, the one who still saves, the one who still heals yes, and Lord. deliver in the name of Jesus. Oh, so Jesus. don't wait for our prayers. The presence of God is already here and ready to touch you, whatever is your sickness, whatever is your need, in the name of Jesus. Nathan, just tell us a little bit about your life, how you started in the healing ministry. Because many people think you just arrived like that and you start. Tell us a little bit the beginning. Really, we have to go back to the beginning in 2002. I'm a pastor's son. I grew up in church all of my life. And yet, around the ages of 16, 17, I began to just turn away from everything that that I'd known as a child, just the presence of God, being in the house of God, you know, more than, more than just Sunday morning. I was there at prayer meetings, Bible studies. I grew up in, in the house of God. And yet at 16, 17, I began to run into the world. By the time I was 19, I was already involved in drugs and alcohol, totally bound with sin, just literally running with everything within me away from all that I knew to be the truth. And yet my father and my mother, they would cry out to God day and night. And I'm speaking to people right now that you may have sons and daughters that they're prodigals. You, you feel like they're away from right. God. Don't quit praying. My father and mm. mother would pace the church and they would cry out for my salvation. When mm. I was 22 years old, I was not in a church. I wasn't even thinking about getting saved. And yet it was just after my birthday, I'd been partying and I was in the house by myself. And suddenly the power of God came into the room. I literally fell into the floor and I was trembling under the power of God. For over three hours, I was just laid in the presence of God. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I have a work for you to do. But if you turn from me today, I will not call you again. And it was in that place that I surrendered my life. 
by the time I got off that floor, God had broken every addiction in my life, every mm. bondage. I was so hungry for God. You know, I'd grown up in church, but yet I didn't want to just fill a pew or just sit in a seat. I wanted to encounter him. And the first year of my walk with Christ, I never saw television. I would wake up in the morning and there was a cry deep within me. I would cry out to God. I, I know now that it wasn't even my prayer. It was, a, it was the prayer that the Holy Spirit had put in with the, within me. It, the scripture that says the deep, calls unto the deep. It was a deep cry within me. I said, God, I want your fire. I want to know you. I, I want to encounter you, Holy Spirit. And it was during that year that God began to visit me. Sometimes it would last for hours. Sometimes it would last for days where the fire of God would come upon me, that same encounter. And I would literally feel heat in my hands, fire all over me. I called my father, I said, dad, what's happening to me? And my dad wondered whether I was kind of going off the rails. They'd prayed years for my salvation. Now, what was happening to their son? But God was birthing a fire in my heart. And it was during that time I began to see open visions. Many of, as you just saw on some of the recent video clips, I saw that years ago in my spirit. And it was like a, God would give me a flash of, of what was about to take place. And it was in that journey I began to preach on the streets of of England, just literally preaching outside the same nightclubs that I used to attend. People, my friends thought I was having a nervous breakdown. They thought I'd lost my mind, but it was on the streets that I began to see the healing power of God. Just right there, just in the streets, laying hands on the sick, pre preaching the gospel. Literally the only way I knew how. I didn't have theology degrees. I didn't have some certificate on the, on the wall, but I had a fire in my heart. And it was from there that God began to launch Shake the Nations Ministries. From Haggai 2.7, it says, I will shake all nations and they will come to the desire of all nations and I will fill this house with glory. They are the days that we're living in right now, Jean-Luc. The greatest harvest of souls the world has ever seen. Amen, amen. And I believe the first thing that God wants to do right now is calling all those who are backslider. Why don't you pray, uh, uh, Nathan, for those who are backslider and God is calling them back to come to Jesus. I want to speak to those that are watching right now. Maybe you just flicked onto this channel and you once knew the Lord. Maybe your parents brought you up in the ways of God. Can I tell you, my friend, there's a call upon your life. That's why you can't get rid of that feeling. You know the emptiness of this world. I was in this world. I searched this world for life, but I, all I found was death and brokenness and addiction and bondage. But right now, God is calling to you. He's calling to your life. He has a plan for you and he loves you with an everlasting love. And all you have have to do is surrender your life. I want to pray for parents right now that your sons and your daughters are away from God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call back the prodigals. Lord, yes. we call back that which you have called, yes. that which you have chosen yes. for your purpose, that Lord, you would turn their hearts, even Jesus during this, this pandemic where the nations are on lockdown, that Lord, your word will go forth and they will feel the call amen. of God upon amen. their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. And if you are parents or grandparents, keep praying for your kids, your grandkids, because the prayer of, of a mom or a dad, God is listening to them and he will touch and save your family in Jesus' name. Jean Luc, Please. can I just say this? I, just to encourage parents, what my parents didn't know is that I would be in nightclubs and bars and my body full of drugs. There were nights that I should have died. And yet the Lord would speak to me in those clubs. I'd go in the restroom with tears rolling down my cheeks. Hmm. And you see, the enemy wants you to believe that your prayers will never work, that they're so far from God and that they'll never return. But the devil is a liar. What my parents didn't know is that their prayers were being heard and God was working on my heart. He was drawing me, wooing me, calling me home. And I want to say to the parents, don't quit. Don't back up. God has already answered your prayers. Your children, your house will serve the Lord. Amen and amen. For those who are just joining, you are on the live stream face to face with Nathan Morris on the International Association of Healing Conference Presence 2020. And uh, actually during all these days, there is a, a rally of teaching regarding healing. And Nathan was just preaching before this face-to-face -face about faith, but also how he started the healing ministry. So I encourage you to go to our YouTube IHM. You will find everything for free. But Nathan, I would love to ask you again. You started to preach the gospel. Did healing start immediately like that? 
No, I, for those that were watching earlier, I, I gave a glimpse of the journey of faith in my life. You know, I think sometimes, you know, when we see great vessels, great preachers and God's using them in a mighty way that somehow we feel, how could I ever get there? And I tried to explain today that my journey wasn't just one day arriving and the blind eyes were opening or the deaf hearing. It was a journey of faith, a journey of obedience. And God had to teach me by his spirit that the preaching of the gospel, salvation and healing are hand in hand. In order to preach the fullness of the gospel, you have to preach healing. Like Jesus, when I, I spoke today, when the, they lowered the paralytic man through the roof, Jesus said to them, which is easier for me to say? Rise up and walk or your sins are forgiven. It offended the religious, but Jesus was showing that healing, salvation is his nature. It is his being. He's not just a healer. He is healing. He's not just a savior. He is salvation. You see, remember when John the Baptist, we know that in the Jordan, he prophesied, he said, I'm not worthy to tie his sandals. Behold the Lamb of God. And yet you read in the next chapter that he sends his disciples to Jesus and said, are you the Messiah? Isn't it funny how the flesh that can suddenly turn? And yet when we take our eyes off Jesus, how that affects our faith. And Jesus responds this, and listen to this, Jean-Luc. He says, Jesus answered them and said, go and tell John's the things that you have seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preach to them. It's when I received this revelation that I knew in order to preach the gospel, I had to step out in faith and pray for the sick. I remember I would preach the gospel and, and you know, Sometimes God would say, do this and do this. And I had to be obedient. I had to take that measure of faith that God had given me and begin to put that faith to work. And it didn't begin with, you know, people getting out of wheelchairs. It began with just being obedient to words of knowledge or just the, the needs that were before me. And it was as I stepped out in faith that God began to take me from faith to faith, from glory to glory. I began to see a manifestation of miracles in my ministry. You know, I remember very on, early on in the gospel crusades, I, I would preach about the blood and then I would begin to pray for the sick. And suddenly, I, as the ministry began to grow and my faith began to be equipped, I began to see great signs and wonders. And I said, God, how is this happening? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, son, whenever you preach about the blood of Jesus, all of the kingdom will back you up. Hallelujah. And it was that revelation that the power is in the message. When you preach the fullness of the gospel, signs and wonders. You see, the Holy Spirit Amen. never bears witness with your emotion. He only bears witness with the word. Even in creation, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep. There was darkness and, and, and it was void. And God said, let there be light. What was the Holy Spirit waiting for? He was waiting for the word. And when you preach the word, the Holy Spirit responds to that word and he brings healing in his wings. Amen. So powerful, Nathan. Nathan, when we see you or when we hear you, we can see that you have a great faith. But many people today, they say, or they can feel, they say, well, I don't have faith. What do you will tell them? You see, I, I refer again, as I was speaking earlier, please, those of you that are watching this, if you can go back and watch that teaching, it's really my journey. Because the Bible says at the point of salvation, when the Holy Spirit brings you to salvation, when he reveals Christ to you and you receive Christ into your life, the Bible says that you are given the measure of faith. That faith is given to you. And yet what we must teach people around the world is it's like saying to Mr. Universe, I wish I had your muscles. No, he had the same muscles as you, but he did more with them than you did. And that's why the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You, as you step out with the measure of faith that you have right now. You see, the Bible teaches us that in, in the gift of prophecy, it says, it says prophesy to the proportion of your faith. 
You see, I didn't start by standing on stages and calling for the blind and calling the lame to walk. No, I started with the measure of faith that God gave me at the point of salvation. I began to pray for those around me, pray for headache and pain. And, and that was my measure. And according to my proportion, I began to use what God gave me. It's the revelation of the talents. It's only as you use the measure. We can all pretend we want to be like the great preachers and the great evangelists. And yet God is saying, if you will use what you have right now, I will cause that faith through my word and the spirit in your life to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. You see, we've been teaching a generation that we need more anointing. You need more anointing, more anointing. That is not biblical teaching. The Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. What is stature? Authority. And you see, you are anointed right now. You have the Holy Spirit. You either have him or you don't have him. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then pray right now and receive him in your life. But if you have the Holy Spirit, God is not calling to you to say, Lord, I need more anointing. No. Whenever God has given me a task to do, the anointing that he gave me is enough to get the job done. What God is asking me to use is the measure of faith that he has given me. And as I use it, it grows from faith to faith. And then you begin, and I taught this earlier, Paul taught the church. He said, my trust now has become my confidence. And when you understand that is you move from just simply trust, but your trust becomes confidence and the confidence is to be obedient to the word. And only when you step out in obedience, God will take you from faith to faith. Amen. That's so powerful. I feel very strongly for those who are watching because we are in a season. It's no more the star system. It's not. We have 70 plus very strong healing ministries, but they are not there to promote their, 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 themselves. They are there to train you and to teach you because a great harvest is right now here in your region, in your family, in your country. And God is willing to use you. So I invite you today just to to if you 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 lost this faith to repent and to come back to what God gave you and to start to move and to start like Nathan Morris said to use it and as you're gonna start to pray for the sick you're gonna see great results in the name of Jesus. Nathan, when you st you say faith, it's a very vital ingredient regarding healing. You saw an increase of healing as your faith was increasing. Or sometimes your face was a little bit weaker and the, the power was stronger. Explain us this, uh, this connection. You see, the Bible says without faith, is it, it is impossible to please God. This is the ingredient that causes revelation to flow in your life. You see, th there were times, you know, the Bible speaks about the working of miracles. But you see, I learned that there are two ways to see people healed. One is through the atmosphere, the presence of God. There are many times in services where I don't lay hands on anybody. All I do is become a vessel and say, Holy Spirit, come. And I allow him to move. You see, that is, I, I hope he doesn't mind, but I, I love him dearly. But Pastor Benny Hinn moves in this realm. Through worship, he brings the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit into a service. But there are times, especially as we preach the gospel to the lost in gospel campaigns, that sometimes their faith is not there. That's why God will require you to move in the realm of your faith. And God had to teach me how to move in this realm of faith when I didn't feel the atmosphere or the tingle down my spine. I had to step out on nothing because my trust had become my confidence. God had shown me, you see, I remember early on in my ministry, I would feel this burning in my hands and I'm not being spooky. I, for those that know me, I'm real. I don't like, you know, kind of hairy, fairy things. I am real, but I would honestly feel heat in my hands. And I would say, Lord, what is this? And God would say, it's for the healing. Hmm. But there came a time in my ministry where my hands didn't burn anymore. What was I to do? I was to step out in the same faith whether I felt anything. So I believe the Holy Spirit wants to teach us how to step out in faith. And I simply would put it to you that obedience to what God has already told you to do. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. 
preach this gospel. So you may say, well, I don't have the faith to raise the dead, but you have faith to lay hands on the sick. Mm -hmm. Begin there, start to be obedient. And as you are obedient, believe me, God will empower you in a way you've never known in all of your life. Amen, amen. So powerful, Nathan. Can you tell us a little bit about this feeling? You are a man of faith. At the same time, you say that you felt this burning fire. Sometimes not. But what is it and how is it working? You know, some things, some things I, I cannot explain. The only thing I would say is in, in Scripture, it speaks about the Lord. And it said, the power was hidden in his hands. And I believe the Holy Spirit was showing me the, the revelation of this is healing virtue. Lay hands, be obedient. So, you know, when we are young in the faith, God will, will go out of his way to teach us, to, to cause us to be obedient. He's a loving God. He wants to use you. And God would give me these things, I believe, like a babe. He would show me, look, this is what I want you to do. And as I was obedient, I got to a place in my faith where God said, I don't need to do that anymore. I don't need to give you a tingle down your spine. I don't need to give you those things. You already know that I am your healer, that I am the healer. Now step out on that word. Step out on the faith that I have already given you. So I would say that sometimes we can get locked into, well, I don't feel this or I don't have that tingle down my spine or I don't feel the presence of God. Well, I had to learn with or without the feeling, God was demanding of me to step out in the same faith. Hmm. The Lord spoke to me very early in my ministry. He said, if you pray for the first, like you do the last and the last, like you do the first, I will show you my glory. And it was in that revelation that God was saying to me, no matter what, no matter whether you see the breakthrough or you don't see the breakthrough. Keep on praying like you did in the beginning and I'll show you my glory. He gave me the revelation in the book of James where it talks about call for the elders, anoint the, the, them with oil and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. But then it goes on to teach us about the story of Elijah praying for rain. And when I first read that, I was like, what has that got to do with praying for the sick? And what the Holy Spirit was teaching us was Elijah prayed for rain with the same prayer, the same tenacity, the same fervency. And he said, now go and look for rain. And the, ser the servant Gehazi comes back and says, there's no rain. But what does Elijah do? He prays again and he prays again and he prays again. And this is what we must have. We must come to a, a place in our faith where we have a tenacity and a fervency. That's why the Bible says the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent take it mm. by force. And God was teaching me through these very early years that this is the tenacity you must have. And sometimes in meetings, you may not feel the presence of God or you may be witnessing at work and you don't feel the anointing. But I promise you, if you will step out in that measure of faith, God will show you his glory. He will reveal to you in that hour, in that moment, something you've never experienced before. Amen. Nathan, the time is almost done. That's so strange. But wow. I feel so strange strongly, uh, Nathan, you are speaking with such boldness and, like you said, tenacity and faith. Uh, can you pray for the viewers, uh, especially for nations who are not American? Uh, we know the American, they are very bold, and sometimes we can add other adjectives. Uh, and some other countries, they are like a little bit uh, like they are no, nobody, especially in Europe. Uh, I know so many ministries and, uh, and Christians, they feel that they are nobody. And uh, by the way, Nathan is not an American, he is a European. And if you want to have him to back that. in Europe, just chat, say, <laughs> Nathan, come back to Europe. We're going to go to your country with Nathan to preach the gospel in Italy, in, uh, in Russia. In Russia, actually, Amen. we're going to be together in November. But can you pray for the people who are watching, who feel that they are nobody, and especially these nations who need to come out? You know, may I say, Jean-Luc, just before I pray, I know time's nearly over, but as you say, I am British and we were known for being reserved and, and supposed to be, you know, kind of reserved. But yet, let me tell you, when you have the Holy Spirit, he mm. crosses over cultural boundaries. He's, he's, the Bible says that the righteous are as bold as lions. 
And as you see in the book of Acts, from Acts chapter 2 right through to Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, as they encountered the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, with great boldness, mm. they preached the gospel. Amen. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah. I speak and I prophesy and I declare over your people that they will be as bold as lions. Amen. Lord, I pray that you would release in them, Lord, a mighty anointing that breaks every yoke. Father, I pray for evangelists right now, Amen. that a fresh fire Amen. would fall upon them right Amen. now. Father, in Jesus' name, I release that anointing. Let the fire of the yes. Holy Ghost fall upon them. Lord, I, may name. their lips become like, like fire. May their words, Lord, be like a hammer that breaks up the stony places. I pray, Lord, that those that would be obedient to the word, obedient to the call, right. that, Lord, you would show yourself mighty to save, that, Lord, they would do great exploits for the kingdom of God. We speak to Europe. We speak, Lord, to the continent of Europe, that, Lord, has been in Jesus darkness, and yet name. it will be changed to a continent of light in Jesus' mighty Amen. name, that you would bring a mighty harvest, not just through great speakers, not through great ministries, but, Lord, through the body, through Amen. your church, every single person in their place believing and, and preaching this gospel in such a time as this. So Father, I thank you that there's a mighty anointing flowing right now. I rebuke every sickness, every disease. Amen. I break every stronghold Jesus in the name. mighty name of Jesus. I speak to a, a man named Stefan. Stefan, I speak right now in the name of Jesus, healing to flow into your body. I speak to that cancer and those small tumors even in your lungs, Stefan, be healed Thank in you, Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. I curse the root of cancer yes. right now in your body. Jesus Loose name. and let him go in Jesus' mighty in name. In Jesus' name. Presence of God is here. If you need a healing, just put your faith in Jesus uh, and he's touching you right now. With Nathan, we come again, all the sickness, all the disease, uh, and we release the healing power of the Holy Spirit over your life. Uh, my friends, uh, what Nathan experienced a few years ago, you're going to experience, because the Bible says, in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. We are truly in the last days, uh, and he wants to pour out his spirit of revival over your family, over your region, over your nation, like never before. Nathan, can you just tell us in a few minutes, because we're right almost at the end what has happened in 2010 wow in 2010 i was invited by pastor john kilpatrick um he is a just a great man of god many know that he led the brownsville revival i was supposed to go for two days for a conference that was called open the heavens and that two days turned into over two and a half years the lord poured out his spirit in a mighty way many of those miracles went around the world one of those miracles that became very well known was the miracle of Delia Knox, who was paralyzed for 23 years. And God brought her out of that wheelchair, ABC, Nightline, CNN, also the Daily Mail newspaper across the United Kingdom, double page spread. It's a miracle. It was just a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which really kind of changed my ministry really forever. It was a landmark moment where joining with Pastor Kilpatrick, thousands upon thousands of people came from all over the world and just incredible nights where God would just literally pour out his spirit, miracles on the stage, people watching blind eyes open right in front of them. It, it was just phenomenal, Jean-Luc. And, uh, you know, I always said to the Lord, you know, many people would say to me, well, God does miracles in Africa. Hmm. He does miracles in third world countries, but in, in the Western world, you know, it's much harder. And I always, you know, I used to feel a righteous anger come up within me. I said, no, he, he, he's the God of the, the nations, not just the third world country. What he does Amen. for one, he will do for all. And I said to the Holy Spirit, I said, Holy Spirit, if you would move in this way, I will serve my visitation. I, I will serve that visitation. So it was in that moment that I laid everything down and, and uh, I, I watched God pour out his spirit in, an, in a mighty way. It was phenomenal. And, and yet at the same time, you know, I knew that I was an evangelist and I was called to the nation. So sometimes God pours out his spirit in a place and we try to make it a habitation. But I knew that it was just another stage, another platform, mm -hmm. another revelation that God was bringing to my life. And I believe that, you know, in the stadiums around the world, that same anointing is still flowing. And, we, you know, I wish we had more time, but, you know, what, what we're seeing right now, it's a marker. This is, this is the calm before the storm. 
we're about to see the greatest harvest of souls the world has ever seen. That's right. I don't just say that. You know, I, if I have just a few more seconds, the Lord spoke to me when Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, I am in chains. He was locked down. But he said this to Timothy, he said, but the word of God is not chain. Mm. He spoke to the Philippians and he said that actually these chains became to the fervence of the gospel. And he said, now the, 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 my brothers preach the gospel with great boldness. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, even though the nations are on lockdown, my word cannot be chained. Hallelujah. It is still going forth. And I promise you this, that what the enemy thought was locked down has actually been to the fervence of the gospel. We're about to see such a mighty harvest, an Amen. acceleration of harvest, like we've never seen before, or the world has Hallelujah. ever seen it in its history. Amen, amen. I believe the same. And I believe, Nathan, as we are arriving at the end, what God has done in the Bay Revival, now it's the time of multiplication. I believe amen. if you are watching right now, and if you put your faith, you believe in God, the same revival that hit this Bay place, this in Florida, it will happen to your place through your life, through your community. And I feel very strongly, the Bible said the power of the testimony is the word of prophecy. So what you just heard in a short time, we will have back Nathan with us because we are working together. And actually we will launch just after this conference a miracles and healing school where all and most of the speakers of this conference and much more are going to come to teach every week one two three session deeper and to come with skis because we believe it's the time to equip you that you can fulfill your destiny and to take this harvest but i feel strongly now such a power of multiplication what has been shared in a few minutes what has happened in 2010 we are in 2020 it's gonna happen to your region nathan can you release what you carry to all of us that this revival may erupt all around the globe in the name of Jesus. Father, we release this anointing right now. Lord, to those that are hungry and thirsting. Father, to those that may feel like they're on lockdown, we speak that your word cannot be chained. So Lord, we pray across the nations right now. Lord, even in the nation of Italy and Portugal. Right. Lord, across Europe, we release this fire. That yes. Lord, there would come an awakening Jesus in the hearts of the Lord. nations. Lord, let there be an outpouring Jesus of the Holy name. Spirit and fire. Raise up evangelists, fiery evangelists that will not compromise, but they will speak the word of God with boldness. I release this anointing right now to those that are hungry and may they be filled Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Lord, let there be a release of the glory, the Shekinah glory of God. And Lord, as churches begin to gather, may they be just an outpouring that will not be behind four walls, but it will spill out into the streets, into our homes, that your glory would literally resound in the nations of the world. Amen. So Father, we pray and we release this in this hour to to those that will hear, to those that will be obedient, to those that will open their mouths mm. and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. We speak a mighty outpouring That's of right. the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty in name. In Jesus' name. My friend, the Holy Spirit is coming over you, the same flame and the same power is over Nathan is coming over you and is going to use you in a powerful way. If you have a healing ministries, just be sure to connect with us. It's the International Association of Healing Ministries, connecting all the healing ministries, working together. But also if you want to start in your region or in your country, miracles and healing service, like we do here in Switzerland now in many places every month, we want to help you because it is the time to preach the gospel gospel and to heal the sick. Nathan, thank you so much for this face-to-face. -face. I hope you will be part of the school. I want to invite you to go deeper because we just passed so quickly over the great gold nuggets that you carry and the wonderful anointing you have. We love you. We highly honor you. For those uh, who have not yet seen the, 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 the live stream of Nathan, be sure to go to IHM YouTube. Also, Tonight at 8 p.m. Swiss time, we're going to have a miracle and healing service online. We're going to launch that. We're going to have the live stream from 
Orlando, actually, with Jesus Image. Michael and Jesse Koulianos with Jesus Image Band will be there. And Nathan Morris will preach. And then after different healing ministries who preach during the day, will just flow in the healing river to bring that to your house, to bring that to your family, and that yourself can receive this healing. May the Lord bless you abundantly. And don't forget to get registered to healing-ministries.org. God bless you and see you soon. Thank you.